Tomorrow on Speed, it's the legendary Bathurst 1000. It is live on Speed. It's a race that's so big, we decided we'd send our big shooters. Daryl Waltrip and Mike Joy will call all the action for the Australian V8 Supercars Bathurst 1000. That's tomorrow at 7 o'clock Eastern. And DW had a wild <laughs> ride while he was there in Bathurst. Just to get an idea of what the track was like, the 1998 champ Jason Bright took him around. Yeah, and he sat on the left side. Obviously, that's a right-hand drive car. And I'm telling you, after watching this race tomorrow night, we will know why Marcus Ambrose is so good. <laughs> exactly. I'm telling you, those guys are really, really good. Two-time champion of the V8 series. Let's go down trackside for our thoughts before Green will start with Wendy Venerini. Thank you, Rick. There's many drivers in this field that are going for championships, one like Ty Dillon. But there's many drivers that have nothing on the line but a victory tonight. It's an all-out battle, and their goal is to get to victory lane and get the trophy here from Kansas Speedway. There's no points and no pressure for many of these drivers in that field. So we're going to be watching a lot of those guys to see what they can get out of this one-and-done race kind of event for them. Ray? You know, Wendy, people ask me all the time, what's your favorite part of your job? And I always say go into victory lane with a first-time winner. And that's very likely when you come to a race in the ARCA series. Well, when we look back over the last four seasons, how about 27 different first-time winners? The guy that leads them from the green on the pole tonight is our most recent first-time winner. And I want to put a couple names on that list. How about Chad Hockenbra and maybe Grant Enfinger? Tonight could be their night. 38 cars in the field. About to take on this mile and a half racetrack for 99 laps. We talked about the fuel window anywhere from 60 to 70 laps. So that will come into play tonight. We'll find out who can maneuver through the traffic as well. Again, out in front, Max Gresham and Alex Bowman making up row number one. That's an awfully potent row number two there. Ty Dillon, Kale Gale. And remember, Ty Dillon made his debut at Iowa last year in the Arca Racing Series. And you know who his crew chief was, right? Yes. Kale Gale. <laughs> The that's guy that's right. starting outside of him right now. Gail Gail. We're going to ride along with a few different drivers as well. One of those being Matt Lofton. He'll carry our camera in the number 16 car. We'll see how he does as he starts in the 36th position. Had a wild ride in qualifying. That's why he starts back there. Had a pretty good car in practice earlier, though. Yeah, he sure did. We're also going to ride along with a former winner here, Scott Legacy. Won here back in 2007, and he will start from the sixth spot. Three drivers in the field have won at this racetrack. We've talked about Ty Dillon winning a year ago, Scott Legacy winning in 07. Well, Frank Kimmel, a guy who hasn't won since 2008, he's also won at this racetrack twice, as a matter of fact, back in 2002 and in 2006. Talked about that wild ride that Matt Lofton had earlier in qualifying. A couple drivers struggled. This was Matt Lofton's struggle. They had to change tires on that race car after his qualifying run, so he will start at the back of the field. Yeah, the most important thing, though, no contact with anything. Also, the 12 of Mary Eve Defoe also getting sideways in qualifying, but wants to go straight now. Green flag in the air. We're underway. About Ty Dillon. Looking to make it too wide going into turn number one. This time it's Ty Dillon with the charge on the inside. Gresham on the outside. A little bobble. Ty Dillon wants to lead the first lap as they go down the backstretch. Remember a five-point bonus for leading a lap here in the Arca Racing Series. Let's see who's going to get it on lap one. Down on the bottom of the racetrack. It's that 41 of Ty Dillon. He chases the race car up a little bit as Max Gresham on the high side in 25. And here comes the 55 of Alex Bowman across the stripe. Who will it be leading lap one? It's Ty Dillon in the 41. Looks like Alex Bowman is going to follow Ty on the inside. You see some sparks. Low air pressure with all these cars right now. That should get better. It is cooling off again. The first ever night race at Kansas Speedway. And you're seeing it right here on speed. I think we're going to see a battle all night between Ty Dillon, this 41 car, and the Venerini Motorsports tandem. We actually have three very, very potent Venerini Motorsports cars. There's two of them right now side by side, Gresham and Bowman. Going for the second spot. Again, Max Gresham in the 25, Alex Bowman in the 55. See Chris Busher in the 17, winner of the last two races for the Arca Racing Series. Kale Gales dropped back behind him. You know, Chris Busher got a couple wins last year in a limited schedule, ran full-time this year. As you mentioned, five second-place finishes before he broke through and then went, waited one week and got another one. Chad Hockenbra on the outside of Chad McCombie. Two Chads battling for the 10th spot. You see Wayne Peterson in the zero pulling off the racetrack. 
Those two again continuing to battle for 10th. McCumbie and Hockenbra. McCumbie won earlier this year. There's Chris Butcher trying to make his way by Gresham for the third spot. So Gresham, after starting on the pole, has already dropped back to third and may lose that spot. As Busher works to the inside now, fast for one lap, maybe when the tires come back up to pressure, he'll be able to get back on that run that he was able to do in qualifying. Look right side of your screen. That's Chad McCombie in the one, the 31 of Tim George, also a winner this year. There's Hack Hockenbra in the 58, and then Frank Kimmel in the 44. Frank looks to the inside of Hockenbra. Frank Kimmel's best finish this year has been second at Talladega early in the season. He's had an amazing season, but it pales in comparison to what Ty Dillon has been able to do. He's had an amazing career in the Arca Series. What, 74 career wins and nine championships? The momentum continuing, though, for Chris Buescher as he battles side by side with Gresham, Ray. And you know, Rick, you mentioned that Chris Buescher has run the whole deal, but throughout the course of this season, they were never quite sure whether that was going to happen from week to week. I talked to Gary Rulo, team manager, on this 17, and he said just a few days before Springfield, they weren't totally sure they were going. So it's been piecemeal here and there. I asked him, what are you guys planning for next year? He said, we're not exactly sure yet. The cat in the hat hasn't told us. And of course, he's referring to Jack Roush. But these guys very, very high on this young driver, Chris Busher, and as you said, the results have been proven in the pudding. Yeah, the last two races going to victory lane as we see race leader Ty Dillon already starting to put a few cars a lap down. Yeah, Chris Busher was actually signed as a driver development uh, situation for Jack Roush before he turned 18 years old. I know David Reagan is really, really high on that young man. But now it looks as though Gresham starting to get some of that momentum back as he gets back to the back bumper of Chris Busher. Again, Busher running in the third spot. You see the, the front skirts on those cars. Remember, these are the old style. No splitter on these Arca Racing Series cars. You see in the corner, those, those skirts are just about the same distance off the racetrack than they are, uh, than, than they are. but on the, on the front straightaway and the back straightaway, the 25 of Max Gresham's skirt is a little bit lower than the 17 of Chris Busher. A little bit, a little bit different aero platform. A little bit more aerodynamic for that 25. We'll see if it works for the 25. There's Max Gresham still running just in front of Alex Bowman. Again, Bowman starting his first ever race on a mile and a half racetrack in an ARCA Racing Series car. Yeah, and I was talking to Alex. He actually was fortunate enough to test here a little while ago, a week or two ago. But he said in race trim, he had a really, really good race car. They really felt like they had a good shot at this thing. And right now, he's chased down Ty Dillon. Ty opened up about a second lead over Alex, and now Alex has caught him. Wendy, what are you hearing with that 55 team? Well, when I talked to Alex before the race, he said the same thing, that they were coming into this event just trying to gain experience and get that win on a, the biggest track he's ever raced at. Last week at Dover was the previous biggest track, and you know what Dover is. They call it the Monster Mile, and that track, he said, had such a sensation of speed. He had a blast racing at Dover, and when he came here, to Kansas he was hoping uh, to keep that momentum going he just wrapped up his K&M Pro East Series Rookie of the Year title last week at Dover so he's coming off a high from that series and it's going to continue on he has two more Pro Series races left in this season as well Ray. Wendy let's talk a little bit about Max Gresham in the number 25 car he's very good on his entry into one and two but not so hot in three and four he said the car is a good bit tight and Billy Venturini, his crew chief, asked him how tight. He said, I'll go a five and a half or a six on a one to ten scale. So not good coming off a four for the 25 team. You know, in talking with Billy Venturini and Max Gresham before the race and actually before qualifying, they said in race run, they thought this car was the car to beat. So they weren't sure how it was going to qualify. And then they end up winning the Menards pole presented by Ansel. So pretty amazing day for Max Gresham. But right now, it's points leader Ty Dillon out in front.